Hello and welcome to episode 38 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show with Brad Nelson and internationally recognised and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, we are talking about that in recent times, there has been a massive shift from enterprise data centers to cloud platforms. Companies are relinquishing enterprise data centers and are moving towards cloud computing due to its pronounced advantages. And make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three tips for migration to cloud. Hi, Dave. It's great to see you on the C-Suite show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here. And this is kind of a question I get all the time, so I'm looking forward to this topic. Yeah, I, I'm sure you do. And a great opening question for this week's show will be, will the Global 2000 be completely free of data centers, do you think, Dave? Yeah, not anytime soon, which is uh, bad news for the Global 2000, because I think uh, many of them have kind of sold their data center businesses off or data, the enterprise data centers and leased them out. And I think some of that's the old legacy stuff will move to co-location providers and managed service providers and things like that. But ultimately, not every workload within the data centers currently are going to be migratable to the cloud. And so the reason why is we don't have platform analogs. We can't provide the same level of security that's required for the particular uh, vertical that they're in. We're unable to get the databases moved and up and running in the time, I think. And so they're uneconomically viable to move. And I think that's fine. And that's going to be approximately 30% of the workloads that we're seeing out there. And so I think that people have to come to the conclusion that the data centers aren't necessarily going away. And if they are going away, they're going to replace with other data center analogs, such as um, MSPs, managed service providers, and colo providers. It's basically just another way to lease a data center that you don't happen to own. And so I think that many more enterprises will be moving in that direction. But the notion that we're going to be 100% in the cloud you know, in the next couple of years is just really just a fallacy. It's just not going to happen. That doesn't mean that I wouldn't, you know, would love to rate, you know, wave a magic wand and have the data center shut down because I think they're you know, kind of these huge structures that don't employ people and they burn massive amounts of energy and things like that. And I like people to combine and share, you know, the compute space with the cloud computing being kind of the platform of doing that. But I just don't think they're going to make the move anytime soon without compromising their business. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, there was a re report done by Cisco, I believe, that predicted that the growth of these hyperscale data centers may support 53% of all data center servers by 2021, which is accounting for about 65% of all data stored and 55% of all data center traffic. I mean, those figures are amazing, really, when you, when you compound those over those years, isn't it? Yeah, it is amazing. And I mean, ultimately, the, at the same time, the enterprises are moving down the street at a faster rate. I mean, the economy is booming right now. Enterprises are growing like crazy. And in essence, you know, we're trying to change the wheels on trucks that are, you know, rolling down the street. And it becomes a very difficult thing to do. And so ultimately, you have to look at what's reasonable in the amount of time that you've allocated, the skill sets you have, what you can really accomplish in the time you need to accomplish. I mean, I think a lot of boards of directors out there are just kind of declaring, that our data centers are dead, we're going to get out of the business because they see it as a huge expense and they go ahead and, you know, get the CIOs together and make them migrate to cloud and, you know, they make the move in that direction. We see lots of Global 2000 companies moving in that direction today. And I think that ultimately, that's not necessarily the message you want to send. You want to say, let's look at what the viable platform options are for the for the platforms we have right now, or the application workloads we have right now, and what's going to be, you know, migratable into the cloud now in one year, two years, three years, four years, five years, and put them in priority order, and then figure out what to do with the legacy systems. Either we're gonna leave them a data center, maintain a smaller data center over time, or in many instances, you know, migrate them out to colos. And this is gonna be a 10-year plan. This is not a two-year plan. This is not a three-year plan. And I think for many of the Global 2000 companies, it's probably gonna be more like a 15, 20-year plan. And I think that's okay. The thing is you have to kind of make ongoing systemic progress over time and become better and efficient using compute resources, storage resources, things like that over time. And I think that the CIOs that are being hired today, that's in essence their marching orders. I just don't want to see any of them run into trouble by taking too aggressive action so they end up uh, you know, stubbing their toes in the stuff. Or what I, what I hear a lot is getting out over their skis. <laughs> getting out over their skis. I like that one. I like that one. That's a good one. So you, it's, a, it's an American term, man. We say it all the time. <laughs> yeah, no, I love it. It's great. Yeah, and I think you're right. You know, look, 
there's a massive growing adoption of software as a service infrastructure and and i think that's contributed to the the huge amount of transformation that we're, we're certainly seeing with the adoption of of cloud and, and and still you know scaling it back and keeping it realistic within the organization because you know a lot of organizations aren't necessarily you know adopting the internet of things but you know a vast majority are and i think that's an important factor when it comes to aligning with the correct cloud platform and where you, what data centers you, you should be using right yeah, I think that uh, ultimately it's modernization of the systems and definitely the net new uh, application workloads, you know, typically should be built on the cloud for most, you know, all the reasons we talk about on this show, you know, going forward with the big, uh, you know, 800 pound gorilla in the room is what to do with these 20, 30, 40, sometimes 40 year old applications that have been running the business for years. And do we replace, refactor, rehost, you know, all that, all the things that would kind of come up, do you have some sort of a SaaS analog that we're able to leverage? and all those sorts of questions are being asked today. I think the reality is that you have to step, you have to step uh, very carefully in moving in those directions because if these things are running your business, then they have to be successful in whatever platform you're gonna place them on. And so you have to make sure that you're picking the right platform and you're not necessarily moving too aggressive. I think we're, we're, we're gonna see a host of organizations that are gonna be you know, probably making the, the tech press when they've move too fast, they've flubbed things up, they've had outages, they've had security breaches, things like that, and which were kind of tracked back to the fact that we were too aggressive and moved too quickly in making the migration decisions on moving the workloads into the cloud. When, if they just kind of stop, take a breath, do some quick analysis and planning, they're gonna be okay. If they don't, they're gonna be a little bit more reckless than they should be, and that's gonna have, a, that's gonna have an impact. It's gonna have a backfiring impact. Yeah, massive impact potentially, massive. It moves us on nicely, Dave, I guess, to your top three tips for cloud migration. Yeah, I'd love to hear those. Yeah, number one is like we talked about, don't force migrate, don't force migrate applications. And I, I think that this happens all the time um, with uh, organizations that have kind of pet applications they want to move into the cloud. They decided that these 20 things are an imperative to move to the cloud because they're the most expensive things that they're paying for without understanding what the applications are doing. And so... If they're COBOL ISAM applications or they're basically legacy applications or basically applications that are tightly coupled and not structured correctly, then they're going to have to go through significant rewriting in order for to make them move into the cloud. And those, not ne those may not necessarily be your first choices in moving to the cloud. And so don't actually pick something just because you're making an emotional decision to move the workload. You have to do the analysis to ensure what you're moving, understanding it and then putting it in priority order with the other portfolios of a workload you're dealing with. Keep costs of both data centers and cloud in mind. Um, in many instances, the you know, cloud can be more expensive than maintaining your existing data center. I know that's that sounds like huge, uh, you know, a huge issue, but the reality is data centers in many instances are sunk costs. In other words, we bought the property, we paid for the equipment, uh, the equipment's gonna have a five-year lifespan and you know we can't sell the thing you know online ultimately we're going to have to either uh, use it or lose it and if that's the case it may make sense for you to kind of hold on to it run the application workloads within the data center because you already paid for it and paid for the equipment until the equipment reaches obsolescence and then go ahead and make the migration at that point point. and by the way there'll be more cloud services more best practices that emerge and, and you should be more successful in delaying the movement and you're gonna be uh, successful in terms of the fact you're paying less money. Now do consider the fact that moving to the cloud is gonna save you an operational cost and the agility cost, things like that, and those need to be factored in. So I'm not telling people to stay in the data center if those, those value points aren't found, but I am telling you that you have to consider the realistic aspect of this stuff and the accounting aspect of when we're we gonna make the move more or not. Finally, you know, never be afraid to move uh, platforms, um, you know, if things are going well. And so um, ultimately, the uh, if things are, and this, this should have been, never be afraid to move platforms if things are not going well. But the thing is, in some instances, if you've moved to the cloud and things haven't uh, worked out the way you should, you, you thought it should, maybe you have security issues or performance issues, things like that. Um, that may not be the platform that you're going, you need to be at right now. So you're either going to have to have a significant refactoring in those workloads. You have to rewrite them for the platform, the cloud, for the cloud native systems. And anything with enough time and money will work fine. But the reality is, in some instances, you may need to basically, you know, pull them back to the original source platforms and reevaluate where you're looking to go for some of these workloads. Excellent three tips there, Dave. Thanks very much. And thanks for being part of the C-Suite show this week. I really appreciate it. 
Always a pleasure. They're great tips, really great tips. And I've got to clarify something. On your T-shirt, you've got the word straight. Underneath it, does it say out of Compton? Olynthicum. Straight out of Linthicum. What's it say? Straight out of Linthicum. Oh, that T-shirt rocks. There you go. You need a merch shop. You need to give me the link for your merch shop so people, <laughs> people can buy that. <laughs> I got it on Amazon. Just type in LinkedIn and it'll pop up. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, no, love it. Love it. Well, thanks for watching. And Dave, thanks for being a part of the C-Suite show as always. That was awesome. It's always a pleasure, man. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed it. You can check out Dave on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Some blue graphics on the screen. Also on Instagram, Facebook, all that social media stuff come and join us talk to us and do all that sort of things uh, all those great sort of things and uh, you know like and subscribe to the channel as well and share the video and remember to click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future shows coming up or the news and uh, yeah until next week and thanks for watching